one thing's for sure, one day we will pass away. One day, your clock is going to get punched. 91, 72, 1953, Mason, Freemason. Influence right there. 76, 53, 95, 64, 54. My dad's buried down there. Uncle's buried over here. Grandma and grandpa's buried over there. Other uncles buried over there. We just came from a funeral right now. Well, we're still here actually. Uh, we just came out of that, what is that, a mausoleum? Mausoleum. We just came out of that mausoleum over there. It says, death is no respecter of persons. The Bible also says, it is appointed once for man to die, then to stand before the judgment seat, throne of Christ, throne of God Almighty. You will stand before the Lord one day. Don't forget that. What you do here on this earth matters. You let people and things sway you away. That's on you, man. Just remember, one day you will stand before the Lord. And your clock will get punched. No doubt about that. It's gonna sway to check for it short. Watch this. Fuse, what fuse? 69. Fuse 69 right here. Keep blowing out. Every time we turn the ignition to the start position, try to start it, this fuse 69 blows out. So what I did is I cut this open right here. This is the top of a blown fuse. This fuse is already blown. See that? Look at that. So I cut the lid off the top, and we got these two terminals exposed right there. So let's put this in here. This is fuse 69 right there. Got that in there, let's set it in a little more. We got the battery disconnected, got that in there. So we're gonna hook up these right here. This alligator clip right here. One down there. And one up here. And the red on this, right here. So what we're doing now is we're powering up that circuit right there. All right, so we got that on. We got the tone there. Then we do this. Push the on button. The closer you get to the power, the louder it gets. The more you move away, the sound goes away. Do that. And now we gotta trace these wires and see where and if we can find the short, okay? That's blowing out. The fuse 69. See how easy that is to hook up? But here we go. We got plenty of power there. Anything here? No. So now we know it gets louder right here. We just gotta trace all these wires. Let's go to the engine. We got juice here, you hear that? Turn this up all the way. So we got power there. It's real strong in here. This is a power distribution box right here. Feeds over here. Still got power there. Okay, we know we got power going into the ECM. Of course the noise is good, but we gotta experiment, man. We gotta uh, do some detective work now. Okay, what we did is we took the connector off to the fuel pump and the sending unit. All right, because this fuse just blows for no reason. Now the short is definitely stuck touching a ground somewhere. I don't know if it's a wire that's burnt out or whatever. So we disconnected the fuel pump and the fuel sender. Then we put the fuse in there, turning the initial switch to on, on position and blew right out. Now we have it disconnected still and we disconnected the fuel injector circuit. It's tied in with this circuit. All right, so now let's put this fuse in here. We'll see if this one blows out. All right, turn it to the on position. Right there, see? So now we know that the fuel pump and the fuel injector circuit are not the cause of the shorts here. 
So now what we're going to do is take out the starter circuit. This is the starter relay. I broke that earlier on accident. And this is the starter uh, fuse. It's a 20 and a relay. Okay, taking out the blown one now. All right. Look at that one. It popped real quick, straight up. Put another one. Okay. Take this light away. All right, go ahead. Let's see if this one blows. Okay, that one popped too. Okay. So now let's continue to pull stuff apart until that thing stops popping. Okay, what I did here is I disconnected all these. All these are loose. All right. We got no current flowing through these. These are, this is the engine, ignition key, ignition key two, the heater, and the starter. All five of these are loose. What we're going to do is turn the ignition switch to the on position. I'm going to put the fuse in and see if it blows. If it doesn't blow, then we're going to put these back in one at a time. We're going to smash them back down one at a time. And the one that blows, that's going to be the circuit that causes the problem. All right, so here we go. Yeah, I know that uh, this is supposed to be a 20 amp. So what? 15 will work. It doesn't matter because we got a short. It doesn't matter what fuse we put in there right now. It's going to blow anyway. But when we do finish the car and we start it, we're going to put the 20 amp back in there. I got two more 20s. So just remember what goes where, all right? Or you can look at that, or what we just did is we took a picture. All we know, but we know that the 40 goes here and the rest are all 30s. Okay, so let's go turn the ignition switch on and see if it blows. Okay, we got the ignition switch off. I'm gonna pull the blown one out right there. Okay, this is the blown fuse right here. No good anymore. Now we got a good one right here. All right, let's put this in and turn, turn the ignition switch to the on position. See what happens. Okay, go ahead. No click. Oh, okay. No click. Okay, and it's not blowing out either. Uh -uh. Okay, so good. Go out there put and put one in at a time. Read the thing and tell me exactly which one it is, okay? Okay, so you guys see what happened? Now it's not blowing out. Okay, I'm leaving it dark so you guys can see when it does blow out when she puts the right one. That that's making the circuit blow. Okay? So there's that 15 right there. I gotta leave it dark so we can see. Okay, let me know what you're doing. The top engine 30 Okay, the very top one? Okay. Okay, nothing. Okay, that's the first top one. All right, you guys? Now leave it in and then? Yeah, leave that one in. Put the next one. Put the next one. Let me show you guys. And the next one is going to be the second engine 30 amp. Okay, not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, now she's going down in a roll like that. Yeah. 30, 30, 30, 40, 30. Okay? So do it just like that. Okay, so. Here we go. Let's see what happens. That one blew out right there. Okay, let's go back and see which one that one. I mean, was. Okay. So this one here, and that is what. That is ignition key 30 amp. So now let's put another fuse in, and then put these other ones in. Let's take this take one out, this one out right? and then put the other ones in. Yeah, let me see, because it's kind of hard to get out. So now we're going to take this one out and put the other, how many more? Four? Three. One, two, three. Three more in. Okay, so now okay. the next one. So now the next one. We skip this one, go to the next one, and see if it blows out again when we put the rest of them, actually. Okay? Okay, here we go. Let's pull out the blown one. This one's blown. Let me show you guys. I don't know if you can see, but that's blown. Now here's a good one. Okay. And we skipped the one that blew the fuse out, right? And now we're on the other one. Okay, go ahead. Okay, good. Ignition's on right now. 
Okay, good. Okay, put the other one in. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're leaving in the ones that are not blowing the fuse. Okay? And she's putting the next one. What's the next one called? Heater 40 amp. Heater 40. This is the 40 amp, the heater. Okay? And the one that blew us out was the uh, ignition something. 30, 30 amp. Ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay, good. Nothing. Nothing. So we got one more, right? Okay, the other one's a 30, I believe. It's uh, so far it hasn't blown out. All right, except for when we put the uh, the ignition deal. Is a starter 20. Okay, starter 20 is the other uh, fuse, the big fuse. Okay, ready? She's about to turn it to the on position. Actually, she's putting it on the start position. Okay, good to go. Okay, good. Perfect. Okay. So now let's go back out there. Let's see if they can see that. Ignition. Let's see. See that one? I point to that real quick. I can't see it. Ignition key one. 30 amp. That's the problem right there. That's the circuit we need to chase. So let's chase that one, all right? Ignition key one. 30 amp right here. That's what's blowing out the uh, the deal in there. Now we got to chase this right here and find out where that short is at. Okay, here we go. This is ignition key one 30 amp fuse right here. This is the one we just put in and this is the one blowing out the uh, 20 amp fuse there. Yes, we're using a 15, but it's perfectly fine. All right, because no matter what, we got a short in here. Okay, so here's the deal here. I'm drawing up the ignition switch, all right? This is when we go to the on position right here, all right? When we turn the switch to the on position like that, we get current flow this way, okay? Disregard all this right here. See, this circuit here, we're not worried about these circuits down here below the ignition switch circuit, which is the uh, ignition key one, the 30 amp one, all right? Going all the way to the 20. And forget the 10 amp here, which is this right here. We're going to go straight to the 20. So the 20 comes out like this. All right. And then you got another one that comes up here. This is a 10. This one also we're going to disregard. Okay. That goes to whatever. This goes to whatever. This goes to whatever. This is what we're focused on right here. All right. Watch this right here. This says... This 20 amp fuse here goes to various components, all right? And then we go to the fuel injectors, coils, and uh, fuel pump relay, and all that other stuff. So what we're doing here now is we're going to focus on what's going on over here. In this circuit alone, all this here, whatever's going over there, and whatever's going over here. We disconnected this right here. So we knocked that one out. We know the short's not in there because we're still popping the fuse. All right, so we're now we're gonna go to this over here. Okay, and so this is where we branch off to other components, all right, that this 20 amp fuse protects. So here's the deal here. In order to have a complete circuit in a whole circle, in a whole, which is a circuit, this is what you need. You need one, a power source, Two conductors or conductor, which is the wires. Three power source is the battery. Three is the control, which is a switch, timer, whatever. Four that's the load. All right, that's the components over here. All right, injectors. Coil. This can be anything. An actuator. A light bulb. Let's go light. Light bulb. Anything. And these, and each one of these components has a certain amount of resistance in it in order to complete the circuit. So it's a big circle like this. And in between it, you have the amp, the fuse. Okay? Here's a light bulb, whatever. Inside here is a certain amount of resistance. 
here's the battery current flows like that the positive the negative which is called conventional theory then you have a switch here ignition switch all right you turn it on bam current starts to flow lights up the light bulb the current starts to flow but when you get a short in this circuit say this decides to break <laughs> snaps like that this is taking a shortcut now this electricity is no longer completing the entire circuit and it may dim the light it may cut the light out completely that's called a short right there okay the electricity is following the path of least resistance just like water same thing water water also follows the path of least resistance so instead of this current flow continuing in a circle like that what's happening is this goes straight to ground and straight to the battery so say we get a short right here this say this wire decides to break and uh snaps and breaks into the body of the car so it gets grounded all right so what happens is instead of current flowing through the entire circuit like that the current's going to take a shortcut hence the name short all right it's going to take a shortcut and go straight this way all right and it's going to go through the body you know which is the chassis straight to the body and go right back to the battery that quick and it'll prevent this light from lighting up and that'll cut all the power from this light into the uh, fuse and that's what you call grounded right there this must take this one's grounded okay because it's grounded itself it's also short but it's grounded straight to the body which prevents the power from going to the light and the fuse but in our case our short is on this side of the fuse. How do we know? Because this fuse keeps popping and our components are over here. All right. That these that this amp that this uh, fuse is protecting. OK, so and that's a good thing that it's popping before uh, the electricity goes to these because too much to, because too much electricity, a voltage spike that goes to the components over here on this side of the fuse will damage the components. And that's why you want this to blow out. And that's a good thing. Fortunately, these are hard to find sometimes. Okay, so we're taking a path right here of least resistance. So this is a short. And, and again, it's taking another shortcut this way. Probably off to the frame the frame of the body. Uh, probably on the body, the engine. I don't know. <clears throat> but see, the problem here is that the now we don't have a lot of resistance. This is voltage, amperage, and resistance. All right. When the resistance goes down, the amperage goes up so now what's happening here is that we got more amperage because there's no resistance it's skipping all the components going straight to the battery and straight to this and boom blowing out the amp i mean the uh the fuse and that's the problem here we got no resistance well very little in this circuit right here and then somehow it's taking a shortcut all right to ground all right, it's not even going through the components or component. It's going straight there, straight through the body of the vehicle to the battery. All right, but since there's a low amount of resistance or no resistance, it's creating a higher amount of amperage. All right, flowing right through here. Wait, straight through the cycle. Let's go all the way back. Go straight from the battery all the way through here. Comes down like this, just like that. Straight up through there and just popping it and that's what the problem is so that tells me that our issue is around here somewhere from this point from this point to our components we have a short somewhere around there the shorts not here all right it's definitely not on this side that's why we're isolating this one circuit only okay so this one's out we can cut that one out we can cut that one out and we're going straight to this right here and we got to find the issue which is going to be somewhere in here and that's how you chase a circuit issue the load are the components over here that this 20 amp fuse is protecting so let's go get it remember this there's three things that can go wrong with the circuit you can have a short a ground grounded circuit or open all right 
in one car I was diagnosing uh, a month ago, I had this issue. All right, E M I. All right, that's electric. That's electric magnetic interference. That one is tricky. All right, so now what we're gonna do is this: put the 30 amp back. Ignition one. I'm gonna disconnect this. We're gonna disable everything on that side of the fuse. The 20 amp fuse protects all this stuff here. Well, some and, and more. But for now, we're just gonna disengage. We're just gonna disconnect this right here. So we got the 30 amp on. We got this side disconnected on the right side of the fuse. Got the fuse in number 69. All right, so now I'm gonna put it in the on position and see if it blows. Ready? Got the key in. Let's see right now. Okay, didn't blow. Look at that. Look at that, didn't blow at all. Okay, let me show you guys what we did just in case uh, you don't understand. We cut all the components out, all right? which are right here. Okay, the injectors and the coil, the coils, okay? And whatever else is hooked up to this point right here. All right, and we already, we still have this disconnected. So how we did that is by this. We disconnected everything from this point on, which is on the right side right here of the 20 amp fuse in there. So now we're getting closer to pinpointing exactly where the short is at. It's either on this side in here or it's on this side in there. Now that we know the general area we can start pinpointing everything little by little and nothing blew out with this disconnected. And that's what you call the process of elimination. Disable different sections of the engine of the uh, circuit components and just attack it one by one. Circuit by circuit. Put on the audio button, this is what you want to see. Point two, right there. That's what you want to see. So we're gonna switch the leads on this, take off this long probe, and put this alligator clip on there. All right, clip this one to the green, the blue stripe, which would be that one right there. Make sure it's not touching anything else. Done deal right there. That's good to go. Okay. That one. Put this on audible. Okay, where's the end? Right here. Okay, so now green blue stripe. Hook this up. Look at the reading. Point two. That's good. The continuity in there is good. All these green wires with the blue stripe. On these right here. All that right there. Good to go. No short in that line so far. All right, so now let's check all these. Uh, one, two, right there. All right, so we got that back probe. Watch this. Check that. It's good to go right there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check all the resistance in the conductors, which is the, which is the wires. Remember I told you guys earlier? Remember I told you guys you gotta have a conductor and to complete a circuit, these are the conductors we're checking, all right? I gotta check all the wires right here through this harness that go to this connector right here to see if they're all good to go. And if some of them, and if one of them are off, that's gonna be our short. But let's keep going. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna check to see which line has the short on it, all right? Is it the power line or the ground line? So let me show you what I made so we can tell which side the power of the ground is gonna blow out the fuse. This stuff ain't no joke, man. This is some pretty tough stuff here. This a short is hard to find sometimes. And this is what it takes, man. See this little thing here? A little homemade device right here. All right, we got a fuse hooked up in it. And what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna shove that in there, put it on the top. That Ohm's test we just did was without the battery uh, connected. Then we're gonna take our alligator clips, a jumper wire, and ground it. Can't go around that, so let's just go on this part. It's good enough. Okay, ground that right there. Take this side, hook it up right here. All right, now we hook up the battery and see if that blows. All right, if that blows, that wire is the issue. 
If it doesn't, then we go to the other one, and the other one will probably be the issue. So let's hook up the battery. Uh, okay, we got the ground side of the fuse hooked up. All right, we're gonna see if it pops. If it pops, that means that's where the short's at, coming from that specific wire. So we got this hooked up, ground there, and now we got the fuse hooked up. We got it grounded right here, and now we're gonna turn it to the on position. Okay, go ahead, let's see if it pops. Nope. Okay, go back, do it again. Okay, try to start it. Okay, nothing there. Okay, so now, let's put it over, turn it off. Okay, now let's put it in the other one. All right, let's switch these, put that in there like that. Okay, so now let's do it again and see if it pops. There it goes right there. So that bottom circuit, the bottom wire is the one that blows it. So now we're getting even closer, okay? This is what you gotta do, this is detective work right here. All right, so we know that that bottom wire is the culprit right there. And that's the power wire. And I'm not putting my meter on that wire because I do not want to blow this fuse in here. All right, so, because if I put my meter, if I put these leads on there, and it blows that 20 amp fuse, and look here, we got a 20 amp fuse in here too. I'm not risking this multimeter. So, you got to be very careful when you're doing this kind of stuff because you could blow your, uh, your equipment out if you don't know about the, uh, the math on this stuff. Okay, what we did is we just tapped into both of these to find out which one was popping the fuse, all right? And it ended up being this one right here. So, we tied into that one, had our fuse right there, and it broke the fuse. We were grounded to the side by the door. And it broke the door, I mean, broke the fuse. So now, we're gonna mix the old school with the new school. We're gonna put the power probe right here. We're gonna hook up the box to generate some power right there. And then we're gonna hook up the other side to ground. That way we can get some current flow inside this wire by itself. Because now we know that the short is in this wire by itself. There's other components here Two, we don't know what's causing the short though. Is it this line here? Is it kinked between anything? Is it stuck between uh, some kind of metal part or hot part? Is, are the wires fried on the inside? I don't know. And touching each other? I don't know yet. But I do know that there's components out there too that supply, that this line supplies power to. You know what I'm saying? And if one of these is grounded on the inside, or like that, <clears throat> that could be blowing that fuse too. So we're almost there. So we're gonna put power through this line and we're gonna follow it with the probe. All right, old school with the new school. Okay, turn the ignition switch on. Okay, check that out. Now turn it back off. Or, right. yeah, that's off right there. Turn it on. Off, on, okay, off, okay, so now let's see if we can trace that wire and follow it. We tore all this apart so we could do a visual, and chances of all these wires going bad, or of any of these going bad, pretty slim, because there's no movement in here, all right? That's not very common for these to uh, go bad, these wires in here, so we're after something that's moving on the inside of the engine, well, in the engine compartment, I mean. So, let's go out there. Okay, now we're hooked up with the green wire with the blue stripe. Right there, we're checking the continuity. We're all the way at the junction box right here. Okay? Listen. Check this test out. Now, this is called the wiggle test. You're wiggling all your wires to see if you got anything that's loose. Anything. So, coming from in there to over here, we got good continuity. Never ever force the probe on the inside like that. Or she's gonna spread the connector and mess it all up. Then it won't make contact with the one inside here. We're gonna back probe this for now and then we're gonna do a wiggle test. This is how you back probe right there. Okay. Then we're gonna hook this up and then start doing a wiggle test. And see if uh, we got anything, uh, any movement for continuity in that wire. <clears throat> okay, now we know that having this wire disconnected 
everything attached, everything connected. Ignition key on position does not blow out the fuse. Okay, so it's all winding down to this wire right here. Somewhere in the loom. All right, let me show you something. Check out the meter here. Here, check this out. Got this hooked up. So green wire with blue stripe. Same here. Right here. Hook this up right here. Green wire with blue stripe. We got resistance there. We shouldn't have that much resistance. Something's up here in the line. All right, if we had clean continuity or clean wire going all the way through, we should be at point two. All right, so we do got an issue here in this wire. Okay, now we're hooked up back on this line and this line. Those lines are these right here. All right, that's from this point. We are hooked up from this point around here, which is that, all right? All the way to around here. We cut off the connectors. So what we're gonna do now is disconnect the PCM with this still hooked up, all right? We're still hooked up around here. So let's take off this connector right here, see if the resistance changes. Nothing there. This one here. Let's see. Barely changes. All right, so we know we still got resistance in this wire, okay? In between from the fuse, actually a little bit further. From up here, the wiring that goes all to this. Look at that resistance right there. That's no good right there. So let's keep hunting. We're almost there. Almost there. Forgot to tell you guys, at the same time, I'm also checking the grounds as I'm going. All right, you see this black with the yellow stripe? That's the ground wire right there. See that? That's good right there. See? And if you want to know if your ground's okay, there's another ground down there. Let's touch that one. Touching right now. See? It's good to go. Okay, we're back on our wires on this harness right here. All right? And again, we're doing another wiggle test to see if the uh, meter changes, if the resistance changes. So I'm just wiggling all kinds of wires down there because we don't know what is what. So that's what you do. Okay, you look for a change. See if anything changes on that meter. You keep your eye on that thing. In case anything changes. Right, so far nothing okay so if that's the case now we have to start disconnecting stuff until we get back down to point two point five point six around there and once we disconnect whatever it is that's causing that high resistance that's going to be the problem right there the question is where is it all right let's keep it going See that connector right there? We're gonna disconnect that one now. All right, and go end to end and see uh, what we got. See if anything changes. Okay, let's get it off. There we go right there. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted to see. All right, now we disabled the part with the resistance. Now we gotta find the wire, the specific wire that is causing that resistance. All right, and so now we're gonna start dealing with this here. Okay, you see those two wires right there? Watch this. That one on the far left, we have that one. We're about to, we're about to put this ground wire. I got this hooked up to the ground right there. All right, this all together clip. We're gonna watch the meter, okay? We still got our meter from this wire to the end of that, okay? And we're showing 39 to 40 ohms. The reason why I put those two pins in there is because of this. So we're gonna touch this one here. Look, nothing. And what we're doing is we're diverting the resistance to a ground. Check this out. You hear that? Now we got continuity. 
That's the one with the 40,000 uh, ohm on it. Ohms. Okay, now we're going to touch the same one right there. And look at this. We'll go down to, let me just clip it on there. Okay, it's clipped on now. Look at that. We just diverted all that resistance to the ground right there. All right, so we got to get that resistance out of that line in order for this the car, in order, in order for this car to work and to prevent that fuse 69 from blowing out. And that's what we just did right there. We diverted all the resistance from that wire all the way to ground. But we're still looking for the point to where the resistance is at. And that's how you hunt, okay? Wire by wire, this stuff takes time, man. That, so that lets us know we're on the right path. Okay, check this out. I think we found the problem, okay? Now, we're hooked up on the green. Okay, we're hooked up on the green with blue stripe right here. We're coming down here, right? Got the computer disconnected, these disconnected. So what I started doing, I started going around Shaking wires, doing the wiggle test, disconnecting everything, right? This here, and then um, down there, I got the uh, I got the meter on that wire on the end down there. All right, to the left, not the safety pin on the right, the one on the left. Okay, that's coming over here. All right, there's a harness that comes over here. All right, I'm looking at everything. Shaking up all the wires everywhere. All right down there coming over here Stab that which is what you're not supposed to do, but that's old school right there Then I touched the leads to the meter on that and we have 40 came over here Disconnect this went over here. I was about to disconnect this right and so what happened was I Was about to I was trying to take this off and at the same time when I was doing the whole test, I kept my eye on the meter. And as soon as I started going like this, and then the meter started changing. And then right then I was like, oh, okay, right there, okay? And so what I did was this. Came down here and looked, show them the, the spot. And if you look right here, look at that right there. It's leaning on the metal right there. And when I pulled it back, we went to open circuit, okay? Because when it was touching, it was getting grounded by this bracket right here, okay? And so when I wiggled this, the meeting, the meter was changing, but now I won't go back on. I'm trying to get it to set back on there so it can show you the resistance. But uh, let's see if we can do that. But when I was, oh, there we go right there. See that? Right there. Right there. There's our problem. See, now I got it pushed up on the bracket right there. And look at that. Now I'm going to let go. Watch my hand. See, I wonder if they can see that. Oh, oh no, take the light off because it's too bright. Now I'm going to take my hand off, watch my hand, and watch the meter. Watch this. Barely touch it. Look at that. Open circuit. That means that it's not shorted right now. And if I go like this, it'll short. That's what you call a short right there. 40 38 ohms of resistance right there that will definitely blow out the fuse watch me let go tap it right there see that push it on again that's a short right there let go push it there's our short right there whoo that was a challenge right there this thing was very hard to find that's how short circuits are though you need to get to the point and the starting point was the fuse okay and then you need to know which way to go do we go towards the ignition or do we go towards the engine you see what i'm saying so we had to play detective and hunt that thing down man and so that was a crazy short to find right there all right so here we go touch it let go and so when I disturbed it, I moved it from leaning on the metal, the bracket, barely a little bit. So now it's able to stay off it. And I bet you, just put all this back together, and I bet you 
when we turn that ignition to the on position that fuse will not blow once we take that off of there but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix the wire let's pull it off right now I'm gonna fix it and then uh, that should be a done deal right there that should be a wrap so it was rubbing up like that and this car was stalling it was starting to stall every once in a while until it finally burned through the entire wire and was resting on it just like that and so after it started resting and then the fuse just continuously blew each time you turn the ignition to the on position okay we got this taped off and what we're gonna do is wrap the entire wire right there the whole deal okay let me wrap the rest like that do this tweak it man so what okay so okay we got everything hooked up all right got the tape on that this is all good move stuff around the wires not touching the bracket anymore it's all taped up this is good to go got the connectors on everything's good got our pins out batteries hooked up computers hooked up now we're gonna go turn the ignition to the on position see what happens so we got a fuse in there yes okay we got a 15 amp fuse in there you see if it pops go for it oh yeah turn it off and on okay try to start it yeah uh oh hold up what's that why is it doing that try it again that's a good thing though. Okay, stop. I must have disconnected uh, something. Hold on. Look, that's why it wouldn't start. Man, just drove me crazy right now. We were looking like we're tripping out on, man, we hooked everything up. What the heck? Until she mentioned the fuel, the fuel line, fuel pump. Man. I was about to go nuts right now. Okay, there we go. Okay, try to start it now. Now we know the fuel, the fuse doesn't blow. So we're good to go. That should start right there. I'm telling you, straight up. Let me get the light. Let me see the light. Okay, let's do it. Start that bad boy up. Right there, bam. Keep going. It'll stay on. Just rev it to keep it on for a little bit. That's it. Don't rev it. Let it go on its own, okay? I want to see if it dies out. Let the fuel, uh, everything burn off and let it heat up and everything. <sighs> That's it right there. Handled. This is the result of war. Look at that. We had to go to battle on this stuff, man. Big time. Back here, everything. That's all the result of looking for a short in this car. This thing is handled. Look at that. That's how you handle a short circuit in your car. Just like that. Don't ever say you can't do something and defeat it. Whenever you get a task set before you, you better get the mind, you better get your mindset ready for war. You hear me? Because if you're gonna do electrical, you better get your head educated with electricity and how this stuff functions and works. And then you get and then you better get ready for war. Straight up. This short circuit in this car is handled. Oh, this thing runs good, man. So uh that's it man. Short circuit defeated. Okay, now start it again. That should be a wrap right there. Okay, done deal right there. It's on. This is my pops right here. Died in um, 2010. September 2010. We lost him to cancer. I did everything with my pops, man. Everything. I miss him like crazy, man. Today's his seventh year 
anniversary since he went home to be with the Lord. Yes, I said to be with the Lord. Before he passed away, he uh, he got baptized, man. Before he passed away, he gave his life to Christ. This was a very hard man. He was very stern. He was very, very strong-minded. He taught me a lot of stuff, man. Of course, he was old school. And he died at a very early age. He was around 56 years old when he died. You know, he developed cancer, three types of cancer. <clears throat> he had cancer in the neck, prostate cancer, lung cancer, all like that. It just came back to back to back. And it just riddled his body with cancer, big time. But I'm just grateful, man. What gives me peace, I'm grateful that he repented and he gave his life to the Lord. The reason why I'm showing you this is because tomorrow's not promised, man. He was only 56 years old. Tomorrow is not promised. You don't know when you're gonna die, but when you do, this is what the Bible says. It is appointed once for man to die and stand before the judgment seat, throne of God. You're gonna stand before Jesus Christ and be judged. What are you gonna be judged on? Your relationship with Jesus Christ and your morality, your morals. You're gonna be judged based on your morals. What you did and what you didn't do for Christ, to live for Christ, whether you rejected him or not. So atheists, agnostics, you better be sure. When you pass away, you better make sure that you know for a fact where you're headed when you pass away. Because if you ain't sure, and you continue guessing like that, it's gonna be a bad day when you stand before the Lord. We just went to a funeral. I showed you at the beginning of the video. We could go at this same cemetery, right over there. Today we're here because of the anniversary of my pops. Check this out. We're going to another funeral right here on Monday. Today is what, Wednesday? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Six more days, we'll be right back here at another funeral. That person died, that person is, is gone. That person passed away in a car accident. She was 22 years old. Tomorrow is not promised. Death is no respecter of persons. Tomorrow is not promised. You don't know when you're gonna pass away. You have no clue of when your clock is gonna get punched. My point is today, is to remind each and every one of you, your time here on this earth is precious. Especially what you do with it about Christ. If you get Jesus Christ wrong, if you get that twisted, and you start letting all these people tell you that Jesus was just a great prophet, like the Muslim cats, or Jesus was just a great teacher, like the Hindus, or Jesus was a great spiritual leader, like the New Agers, you're gonna get misled. Jesus was not just that. Jesus came down, manifested in the flesh. He was God Almighty, manifested in the flesh. Don't get that twisted. You get Jesus wrong, everything else is gonna be out of order. Your perception about Christ, the Bible, will be twisted. Jesus Christ is Lord, King of Kings. God Almighty, he created you, this entire planet, this whole universe. I don't care what them atheists say, or the agnostics, or the new age gurus. Don't fall for them lies. You don't know when your time is coming. Today's Monday, we just got out the funeral right now. Sad, man, sad. Um, girl was 22 years old. A little baby boy was running around in the aisles, you know, and while her picture was up there. Check this out. Show them this. You see this date here? 1894, March, November 13, 19, 1957. Okay? That's when they were born, of course. You guys know. 1957 is when they passed away. Look at that dash there. See that dash? That dash? That dash? All four of these people? 
let's, let's go over here. See all these dashes? Everything has a dash in here. Dash, look at this. 1891, 1957. Dash. 1897, 1957. Dash. What does that mean right there to you? What does this mean to you? That is a small vapor of time that the Bible talks about. That dash is your free will from the day you're born to the day you pass away you have all that time to get your life right with Christ if you don't get this you're gonna die and perish and go to hell straight up I ain't making that up I ain't judging you I'm telling you and I'm reminding you of what the Bible says Psalms 90, 12, Bible says, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That means, Lord, show me. Show me what's happening between the dash, between the moment I, I, I'm alive and to the moment I could pass away. Show me, give me wisdom and understanding in between that time. If you ain't seeking the Lord, if you ain't fervently going after the Lord, if you ain't knocking and chasing the Lord, you are going to get twisted in so much stuff that's going to throw you off and keep you away from Christ. You don't want to be on that level, man. And I'll tell you why a lot of you guys get upset when I talk about the Lord on this channel. I ain't stopping though. Believe it. Ain't none of you guys gonna get me to stop. So, so kill that noise about stop talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ ain't got nothing to do with what I'm doing. That's a lie from the pit. He made you. Who do you think gave you the ability to do what you do? Who do you think gave you the skills? Who do you think gave you the dreams, the passion, the goals? So kill that noise about God ain't got nothing to do with this cars whatever your occupation is god created you gave you the vision and everything for you to do what you do so kill all that noise let me tell you why you hate on christ and why some of you guys oppose christianity and why some of you hate jesus some of you are the enemies of the cross i guarantee you i get a lot of wicked stuff coming from a lot of you guys don't phase me though because I know, man, in your heart, that's the flesh. That's the natural man that you have no idea that's got you consumed and got you bitter and, and, and filling your heart with all that hate against Christ. Check this out. This is about the natural man. 1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned that's why you get mad because when a Christian comes and tells you that Jesus loves you and died on the cross for you your natural instinct through your flesh is to say oh, man who is this Jesus all this phony baloney stuff all this sp flying spaghetti monster stuff which your atheists talk about your flesh has no idea cannot comprehend the things of the spirit the Holy Spirit of God because you have never ever called on the Lord and that's why you get mad because you're walking in the flesh and your flesh is consuming you keeping you from Jesus Christ therefore you will never ever come to the Lord and God will never give you the understanding because you you're pumping your fists you're demanding things you're trying to tell God how things are you don't even run a show like that you never will you never no man has ever ran a show like that but what's happening is man is trying to trying to run a show and claim that they know better than God that's why your flesh gets angry that's why you get upset when I talk about Jesus Christ you think I'm stopping try to stop me ain't no none of you guys gonna stop me straight up I speak this stuff because I care about your soul straight up now here's a question if you were to die tonight know where you would be going if 
you were to die tonight, can you say honestly that you are saved? If you die tonight, what's going to happen to your soul? The Bible says, this night, your soul shall be required of thee. That means it's on you. Somebody told me one time, man, I wish there was instructions for life. I told him there is. It's called the Bible. It's called the Holy Bible. That is the instructions for life. <sighs> if your answer to that question is, I don't know what would happen if I die today, or I have no idea, that means you ain't saved. You need to get saved. You need to repent. You need to repent before Jesus Christ. You need to clean everything up that you've been doing. Get rid of all that junk, man. All that junk that has hindered you. All that bondage you're in. The gambling. The smoking. Yes, smoking weed and cigarettes or whatever you're smoking. The drugs. The alcohol. The lying. The cheating. You got to get rid of all that, man. You can't stand before the Lord and be unclean. You got to repent. Your soul is required of you. I do this because I have a sincere concern for each and every one of your souls. I mean this, man. From the bottom of my heart, I do. I seriously mean this. I don't want to see none of you guys go to hell. So the answer, you got to repent. How you do that? You got to say, dear Lord Jesus Christ, please forgive me for my sins. Please forgive me for everything that I've done against you. Everything that I've done outside your will. Have mercy on me, Lord Jesus Christ. Please forgive me for my sins. Lord, come in my life. Direct me. Guide me. Give me understanding, Lord. That's all you got to do, man. But you got to mean it from the heart. You got to repent, then you got to be baptized. Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins. In the name of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So with that, don't play with your soul, man. That's all you got to do. Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for you. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. John 3, 16. In Jesus' mighty, holy, glorious, magnificent, mighty, precious name, Stay bold, confident, never give up, never back down, and keep on smashing.